BMW has never made an M7, but in this new M760 Li xDrive, we might have the next best thing. This is an M Performance 7 Series flagship with a 6.6 litre, 610 horsepower V12, four wheel drive, four wheel steering, a whole ton of gadgetry. It costs £132,000. It is basically the most luxurious BMW limo you can buy. Before we drive this limo on a racetrack, which is of course the essential test of any big executive car, let's just have a quick talk around what makes a 760Li a 760Li. Up front you'll see this cerium grey trim on the grille that marks out what makes this car special. Of course underneath there is the 6.6 litre twin turbo V12, 610 horsepower. I like the sound of that. As we walk around the car, you'll see that engine drives through an eight-speed automatic gearbox. It drives all four wheels through BMW's X-Drive system, which we know already. Most of the time, it acts like a rear-wheel drive, sends all the power to the rear, but then if you lose grip, then it'll start sending drive torque to the front wheels, but only when you need it. As we walk around the car, we've got these unique 20-inch wheels, special for this model. Around the back, we've got an M Sport exhaust system, which has a, a flap which opens up and promises to sound pretty fancy. Looking forward to hearing hearing what that sounds like. But of course, the essential point for a car like this is, how are people going to tell that you've invested in a V12 over and above the regular 7 Series riffraff? Well, we've got the badges on the back, obviously. We've got the cerium grey mirrors here and on the grille, like I said. Overall, it's a pretty mean looking package. So how many BMW M760 Li owners are ever going to venture onto a track day? I would venture precisely zero, but Seeing as we've got this fantastic track, we've got a car, let's have a crack. See what it's like, what can I tell you? Well, 6.6 .6 litre V12 with 610 horsepower, four wheel drive, X drive, four wheel drive, which is mainly rear wheel drive, but sends a bit of power to the front axle when required, like this tight turn here. We've got eight speed automatic, We've got variable front to rear torque. We've got, okay, it's a barge. Let's get that clear. This is not an M4 GTS on the track. Let's be clear about that. But it's pretty damn impressive. This four wheel steering does a very good job of making the car feel a lot more agile than it has any right to. There you go, quite a bit of understeer there. I should be in the dynamic traction control. I'm hoping there we go, dynamic traction control. We should have a bit more freedom now. The active anti-roll is doing a really good job of keeping the car reasonably flat. Around we go. Oh, there's a bit of understeer there, but let's get back on the power, see if that neutralizes it a little bit. There's a lot of tire howl going on there. I've got to say, this engine is really nice. It's very, very torquey, but it likes to rev as well. It's impressive. But if you think that engine noise is impressive, we've got to a variable flap system in the exhaust. I've been told that it, this car does have the active sound design, so it does have a bit of noise being piped through the speakers in the way that we have criticised so much in the past. But, you know, it sounds a bit better than some of those. Sounds less video game, sounds a bit more convincing. I can feel the brake pedal going a little bit long now. But it's not an M car. I think M Performance is probably the right badge for this car. So what exactly did we learn about the M760 Li by driving it around a racetrack? Um, not a whole lot to be honest, it does understeer a bit, it doesn't feel quite as rear wheel drive as they promised, but it is ruddy fast. Getting it out here on the road however, it starts to make a bit more sense. Now to get to where I am here, I've wafted along the valley floor out of Palm Springs along a, an interstate and I had the car set to comfort mode and it was exactly as refined and comfortable as you'd hope in a 7 Series. But now I'm out here in the mountains and the roads have got a bit twistier, I'm starting to have a play around with some of these settings a bit. So now if I put it into the adaptive setting, the Executive Drive Pro suspension and the gearbox are using stuff like the navigation, reading the road ahead, knowing what's coming, and the way I'm driving and setting the car up accordingly. And it really is pretty damn clever, I've got to say. Even on a fairly narrow, twisty road like this, the 760 suddenly starts to feel almost chuckable. 
which is slightly bizarre given how big and heavy this thing is. Remember, 2.3 tonnes. It's really quite impressive and it kind of makes sense of that range of purpose that BMW wants this car to take in. I have to say, I'm more impressed with it here on the road than I was on the track, but then it's probably not that surprising really because this is where the car is geared up to operate. As we've said, this car costs 132 grand. And if you look a little bit lower down the price, or if you look at maybe an S63 AMG or a Porsche Panamera Turbo Executive, they're both up there on speed. The Panamera for sure is as fast to 60 and also tops out at 190 miles an hour. So that is a comparably quick car. But both of those cars are only V8. So in terms of pecking order, you're down there a bit. If you want a V12 that goes this fast, you're kind of going to be looking at maybe a Bentley Flying Spur, maybe the new W12S, which has 605 horsepower, so it's down on power compared with this. It does do 200 miles an hour, over 200 miles an hour. It's the only car in this sector to do the double ton, but that's pretty much 170 grand. Or there is the Mercedes AMG S65, which has 630 horsepower and 1,000 newton meters of torque, 737 pound feet in old money. And that starts at 185 grand. Really, in that context, the M760 actually looks a fairly conspicuous bargain. All very impressive, really. And I've got to say, the way you can put it into sport mode here and start attacking the bends is really quite startling given how big this car is. I'm enjoying it a lot, lot more than I expected. I mean, it's, you know, it's not the last word in communication, but it does, to use that old cliche, shrink around you somewhat. And that's obviously got a lot to do with the four wheel steering, effectively lengthening and shortening the wheelbase as you go around the corners. But the way all the technology works is really, really seamless and really, really impressive, I've got to say. But of course, there's only so much you can tell about a car like this from the front seat because quite a lot of the customers are going to be enjoying it from the back. So how is it back there? Seeing as you ask, it's really quite pleasant. I've got my seat reclined into its sleep position. I've got a nice comfy pillow. I'm having a massage. And while I've been back here, I've been pondering, can you really turn a 7 Series into an M car? Well, I'm not quite sure if this is still a big luxury limo or just a very big performance saloon. I think BMW might be hedging its bets a little too, maybe testing the water and seeing if the demand is out there for a full-on M7. It's rather a nice idea really, isn't it? In the meantime, if you really want a V12 mega barge, the M760 Li seems something of a bargain.